Welcome back to Birds of a Feather. Edition. It's your girl AJ, the Suburban Princess, here back with our co ed, Eddie B. What up? Hey, AJ. I'm good. How are, how are you doing? I'm tired. Are, are you not yeah. tired from watching that game last night? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> That was uh that was, that was rough. I mean, it was, it was fun to watch, but I had a feeling they were gonna turn it off. You know, and, and the uh, I was me and Rich were hanging out, and somebody was like, um, one guy was like, oh, but Nick Nurse is good at um at a, he's one of the best adjustment coaches there is, um, which is which is true. He is very good at making adjustments, uh, and we were just like, yeah, if we had Doc, we wouldn't that wouldn't happen because Doc is not good at making adjustments. He gets a plan. He sticks with it. So that's that's, yeah. that's Doc. But uh, they came out and had some life in the second half. I mean, it was crazy. It was like wow. I mean, it was what they scored what thirty points in the third and um, like thirty over thirty in the in the fourth. All I know is there was definite energy shift. That was for sure. Because the way they whimpered out in the first half, I was just like, yeah, y'all got to figure this shit out. <laughs> y'all got to figure it out oh, quickly. The first, the first, for both teams, the first, uh, the first quarter, the first period was ridiculous. It was just like they kept missing. Nobody scored any points for Nobody the, first scored? Two, the first two minutes. <laughs> I did notice that when I tuned on. I was just first like, yo, bucket. is two anybody minutes, with a basket? Two, two minutes in, first bucket went down. I was like, Really, two minutes? Like, like <laughs> we knew it was rainy yesterday. I think everybody had the the heavy legs for a while. It's like nobody was enthusiastic. I'm like, do y'all want to play tonight? Like, because I don't. How, 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 how about Batoon being clutch? Let me just tell you, magnifique. All I gotta say is, viva la France. Uh, hey, I, I love Kelly Oubre calling them boom boom Batoon. We we like this one. <laughs> we like that. Yeah. Name. And then even like. And uh, even the uh, little Philly boy was showing some hustle. Even though I mean, he didn't score that much, but uh, Lowry was showing some hustle. I mean, he he got a couple like balls that he like still and, like stripped them away, and dove for him, and like. I'll be honest. Ka Ka uh, I call him booty on Twitter, which is disrespectful, but it's because his butt is big. He has a he has a booty for considering. He used to be bigger than that. He actually lost some weight when he got on the Sixers, but he used to have a dunk. So I call him booty. But Kyle did come on and show more energy than anyone in the first half, even into the second. So I think the way mm -hmm. Kyle attacked uh, the Heat is really what helped everybody finally get, because everybody mm -hmm. was just a mess. Like you could tell everybody was off rhythm, which obviously yeah. the, the zone is the big play that apparently well, stumps them. You know, nobody well, could find anybody. It, it was crazy because, uh, you know, MB, and MB quietly had a good game, had a decent game. Like, it was crazy. He went in up with, what was it 23 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists? Like and B comes a, in when he needs to come in. That, that, that was a good, that's a good, I mean, that's a decent line. So yeah. but uh it was crazy that uh they just they kept every time you turn around, especially in the beginning of the game, they were just crashing and beat. Every time he got the ball, there was three guys around them. I felt like at one point there was even four on Maxi at one point. So Maxi was getting flustered early, you know? I think he was getting pissed off and he seemed like he was dragging his legs early. Um and there was a lot of bad passing in the beginning too. Like a lot of passing got picked off. Yeah. Mad turnovers. Like they haven't had this many turn turn turnovers in a while. And you have to consider the fact that, like we always say, every time the roster changes every year, this is the stuff that freaks me out during this time of year, is that they haven't really played as consistent as a roster with Embiid back in a while. So it's like, yeah. we're happy he's back and all, but can they continue this pace during what's now going to be the, the Knicks set? Cause the Knicks are on fire. So we got to see how they play them. Um, I'm not worried about the Knicks. I'm worried about them as a team. Can they keep their performance and their stamina up consistently? Yeah, That's my only, I'm not good. scared of the Knicks. I'm scared of what our team can do. Yeah. I, I, I think they'll be okay. It's going to be a tough series though. It is. It, it that's tough, my that's yeah. that's my thing. Who would have thought the Knicks series would be a tough series? You know, yeah. we're an upside down world right now with the East. Let's be honest. Like it's like the upside the, down. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like you should flip the whole like top ten standings. Like if you really looked at it, I was just sitting there going like, why are we in the plate? But you know what? I kept forgetting. Like Embiid was gone half the season, so 
a lot of stuff changed obviously after he had that injury and then he got the surgery. What I think is happening now, because you know, Twitter has just been the optics police about how his body language and blah blah blah. He's and tired. Now, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm tired <laughs> of that. Tired. I, no, here's the thing. This is when you realize people are not thinking rationally. Yeah. This this whole thing about his body language got old. Mm. And I was guilty of it two, two years ago. But the problem yeah. is we're forgetting that he actually had surgery and he's also seven feet tall. Like you have to realize like his yes. limbs, he's still almost like a Bambi kind of like state right now because he's still trying to figure out how he can how he can switch position real quick, how much mobility he still has. He's only going to mm-hmm. be able to be comfortable if the more he continues to play. He can't he can't get that continuity at home or on the treadmill or whatever because it's not the same pace. So a lot of times mm-hmm. when he bumps into people, when he's trying to save, you know, uh, try to not lose the ball or whatever, there's a lot of things he has to consider that when yeah. you have surgery and you don't have impact until you're on the court, that kind of throws his game off. And so... <laughs> He's not comfortable until he's totally clear of beef of someone on him, but they were on him like like they should be, because he's mm-hmm. the MVP. You know, you're not, you're not supposed to leave them leave and beat open, but when they do, you see what happens. He be getting baskets, not even trying. That one time, that game that he hit the basket from throwing behind, and he thought he was fouled and still yeah. made it. I couldn't believe it. He was pissed because yeah. he didn't get fouled, but I'm like, meanwhile, you threw the ball behind your back and got the bucket, like. Yeah. Just didn't even think twice about it. He was mad he didn't get fouled. Like I was just like, this man. And then he hit that three out of nowhere in the third quarter. And I was just even like, though. all right, he's back. You yeah. know, he's not gonna play in that shape that everybody wants him to be. You don't just snap back from that. <laughs> no, his conditioning is not there yet. It's gonna No, and that's the thing we have to stop overanalyzing. Like I'm trying to tell myself that. Like, stop being like like the whole mopey thing, like, you know, that's what everybody's lazy analysis is now because we're so, for some reason, we expect him to just come on and just be all like Maxi. He's not Maxi's age. He's not Maxi's size. No. But even Maxi's tired because Maxi's pretty much maxed himself out at this point in his in, in uh, his point in his life. But he also has that, he still has a very strong desire and, and the youth to have that stamina. So he's going to clearly turn it on a lot quicker than Embiid. But yeah. Like I said, the whole first half, everybody was dragging their their legs. I didn't know what the hell was going on, you know? And yeah. Kyle was a big help because he did generate a lot of, like, direction on the court. Um, yeah. You know, and honestly, I was more shocked at some of the shooters that started showing up for the Heat. Like, I told you on text, I was like, when the hell did Hero become good? Like, Hero ain't been Hero? good for a minute. I can't, I can't stand him. He's been good. I know for you me. can't tell, but he was hitting some shots. Like, let's keep it real. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I can't stand him, but he's been good for a minute. I mean, he has been. And then the rookie Jaime, he's going to be fierce. I mean, he, homeboy, had he, had he not even had the turnovers that he ended up having, Jaime probably would have killed them too if it, if it wasn't Hero with that last basket before the game ended. Um, and then obviously, unfortunately, you know, prayers go to Jimmy um, Butler because they said that he may have torn his MCL. So uh, he, he, yeah, he kind of came down weird on that leg. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out how it happened. I couldn't figure out if Ubre, when he jumped up, did his knee or foot go into the back of his knee and maybe. He no, it is the way he, it's the way he landed. It's just the way he, he like, landed. Twisted it. Yeah. And it just went down. And he kind of went back with him a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was, yeah. and I think he was trying to avoid too much of the impact, so I don't, I agree with most people that quickly said, like, it didn't look dirty. I'm like, no, he wasn't trying no, to drag it wasn't dirty. him. It didn't look like the one that uh, got him beat out. <laughs> right, exactly. It wasn't like he get intentionally uh, landed back on him. the guy just landed on him on purpose, and he yeah. didn't have to fall down. He just was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. hey, and I'm going to go back. On, impact from Ubre versus impact from Embiid is, kind of painful so yeah. i don't think Ubre would have left as much damage as as Embiid had when you know if Embiid had been the one that landed on jimmy's knee but yeah um yeah so i feel bad for jimmy but i mean i think at this point they could have easily won that game still i mean there were still some had batum and maxi not come in there with some stellar defense and then obviously we got some good buckets from cam and um you know kyle even started hitting some but the blessing of the bench is really what's going to kill what's oh, going to yeah. keep this game interesting for this next series, which kept this game even intact. Because like you said, had we had doc, he wouldn't have probably let Maxi play again. You know, that quarter, he probably would have decided Maxi needed the rest or, you know what I mean? Like, so. Or he wouldn't be playing like, he wouldn't let, 
Cameron Payne coming in or anybody else. So. No, he he would he would have he would have just been stubborn and kept Tobias in there the whole game, knowing Tobias was dragging. So, man, Tobias only scored nine points in that game too. Like, oh, they were killing him on Twitter, and I'm just like, I just ignore it because I'm like, I expect y'all to be <laughs> hating on so, him. I mean, I couldn't even I couldn't even stand up for him. I was just like, yo, what was that air ball? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh God, he was speaking horrible, and then he, he then was. He came, he came out and he's like at for like for a few t- times he had he had some he was aggressive a couple times but then he just stopped being aggressive. I'm like, okay, and all of a sudden you just stopped being aggressive. Like I, I don't was, know I don't know what happens to him mentally and around and, which is weird because like I said to what was it last season and even the season before we were talking about his defense had had improved. So I don't he know if ten rebounds though. I'll give him that. But, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and he did actually hit a layup shot. Uh, I think it was before the half or after the half that usually he misses. So. You know, he came back yeah. at times, but I think the coach was generous to even say he took him out because he knew he was tired instead of saying he wasn't doing shit. <laughs> he just said he was took tired. because he went to sleep. <laughs> right. Like, and he was yeah. tired of watching him. But, you know, he can't mm-hmm. say that, you know. Oh, yeah. But Nick Nurse is very professional. I admire him because you can tell he's studying. And, I, I mean, who... Who can't laugh at sometimes him being just as outraged as the fans when somebody's calls? Because oh, when they called that technical, Nick Nurse lost his shit for a minute though. Oh, when he loses it, I crack up because I'm waiting for him to just bl- literally blow a cir- like a circuit in his head, like because I feel like he's about to just oh he, he, he lost to punch it on, somebody so bad. <laughs> yeah, he lost it on that play, and he lost it on the play when the guy literally like a hero actually knocked Lowry out of the way. Yeah, that was obvious, and they replayed. And I'm it. like, how do you okay. not call foul there? Yeah, and all so plays, that's questions. not that's not a foul. Yeah, there are questionable then, fouls on both. And then by like when uh when him uh well Batum went to follow up and he got the basket. Yeah, he went to follow up, but he should have been fouling that because as he's following up, what's saying pushes him. Yeah, but then was was that the one where Batum got that dunk and everyone said had it counted because they they called that foul there and I said to myself I said that would no been that, that yeah that the foul was on the floor yeah and I'm talking okay. about the other one where okay. Uh, Somebody missed the layup, and he came up behind it, and he right. uh, finished it. Okay. But he, the guy pushed him into it, though. I'm like, yeah. So they, but they didn't call that. They were just like, ah, was that important? Yeah, Lauer were... got got knocked down twice, and it should have been, uh, <laughs> should have well, been. Especially, a... especially the the first time we saw the obvious thing, he even was like, "Hello, hello." Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean his, granted, it, I thought, I thought he hit his face on the floor. How hard he fell down. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's where I kind of cracked up. And then part of me said, even when he was a rafter, I used to say, Kyle is so dramatic. No matter what happens, he's always like, whoop, whoop, whoop. But that was the first time I was just like, nah, that was kind of obvious. Like, y'all said yeah. y'all was for that one. But, yeah, I mean, anytime Tony Brothers uh, is a ref, I get nervous. Like, he's one of those refs that when people say he's coaching, he's the ref, I'm like, here we go. He's going to be like, because he does this every time when they have, they use him, that that brother, um, when he has to ref games, there's always certain plays that could almost cost the game, you know? Um, yeah. I'm still mad about that one series with the Raptors that, uh, what's his name, had his, basically had his arm around um, Embiid's neck as he's dunking. I was still mad. Oh, about yeah, that. and they didn't even say anything. They were Literally, like... just let it happen. And I'm sitting there going... Do you not remember, see him like clotheslining and be? I remember that he was like, like he's about to put him in a chokehold. Yes, <laughs> and I, I never liked him since then. After that, I was like, "F you! I don't even care what happens to your career, bro." Because <laughs> I'm sorry, like you know, he he was feeling himself after that because clearly they had given up the game. But it was just the fact yeah. that you can say like I locked up the African <laughs> and then got my dunk on. You know, yeah. so he was popping his collar, wearing his stupid T-shirt after that game. It pissed me off so much, but, but. Lo and behold, we know we have the series coming up. I'm only negative because of how I know it takes. Now, I don't expect them to be this lat- lackadaisical with the first game, obviously, because it's Saturday and it's mm-hmm. a two two or three-day t- yeah, two day turnover. I feel like they'll have more energy. Where I'm nervous is when, like anything, by game three, when mm-hmm. they kind of figured each other out, regardless yeah. of what their record was in the reg- regular season. I just pray and hope that when there's that lull that usually happens when you kind of feel like the Sixers are tapping out, that they kind of rebound from it. Because that's been always the issue with every playoff series game, whether it's in the first round or second round, is when they yeah. have that lull and they can't, like you said before, adjust, that's when I get nervous. Yeah, you know? I, I think, yeah, I, I think the different coaching is going to help that whole thing, so. 
I different hope so. mindset, different mindset. You know, it's, it, I, I think it'll, that'll go into play with helping them get over that hump. So. Well, I mean, obviously the communication is different this time around with this coach. So that definitely has shown, there's definitely, you can tell a need for other players to kind of look each other in the eye outside of just mm -hmm. in taxi. Like the, I think everybody, Kelly, Batum, all these players strictly do have this focus of like, figure it out or just like, no, we got to do this, you know? So, mm -hmm. but, but shout out to Batum. He definitely was the man of the night. He saved that last quarter because even Embiid said in the post, you know, presser that he basically helped us win, you know? And, I mean, and, and that's what we need. We need, we need yeah. guys to hit, we need guys to hit those shots when they're leaving, when they're crashing to Embiid and he passes it out to a wide open person, we need them to not, they got to knock down those shots. I mean, that that's, that's the key right there. That's, like we were that's, talking about the spacing thing. Like yeah, we were talking about the spacing the thing. It's giving them open looks and they got to hit them. They got to hit them. Because that was the bridge. That was the issue with every playoff run ending was that they could never get that. Um, you could never have somebody to have him beat back when they know he's going to get doubled. Like it seemed like nobody could get that rescue shot or, or, or yeah. seem hungry enough to want to figure out how to get out of the, of, of the zone, you know, defense. Yeah. But now we got some shooters. I mean, we, <laughs> we, we even okay. got a question. What happened to Buddy Hill? What, why does he pass the ball more than he seemed like he should have last night? I felt like he was shying away from a lot of shots. Because a lot of people are saying, why does he like go quiet? You know? Well, I think, I mean, he, uh, I don't think maybe he wasn't comfortable at the time, but he did take, I mean, he he got a couple shots. I mean, he, he hit a couple. So I just but, feel like he could have did more. I just feel like where he kind of hesitates and passes is where his campaign will just go in there and just shoot it right off the bat. Like he'll just try it. You know, I feel like Buddy Healed is kind yeah, of. Yeah, but we also, we also don't want, we don't want, we don't want to keep wasting possessions if it's going to randomly just keep shooting it up if it's not there. He's not feeling it. Uh, I'm no, okay and I get it. it. I get it. I just felt like even like I saw some of that chatter too was just like, yo, what's up with Buddy? Like, why don't he just yeah. take more shots? And I'm just like, probably because at that point he's feeling that vibe of like, I feel like Batum got it. And and he was right on the sense that when he gave it to Batum those two times, Batum hit it every time. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty much just sitting there all by himself. So it was like, all right, <laughs> like, Hot hand, he had, yeah. He had, the, he had the best look and he had the hot hand, so you give it to him. I mean, that's I mean, just... I've never seen somebody since actually since when we first got Tobias, where he every time he got on the floor, he hit a three like without trying. Mm -hmm. I don't know, obviously, time has changed, but Tobias was that guy when they drafted him and Mike Scott, they could just come in and just hit their threes. Now, and I think I'm Buddy gonna... will be fine. I mean, yeah, I hope he, he still shoots, he shoots better, honestly, like he still shoots better than he's. He shoots better than league average. I mean, you know, you think about it, you look at it. Even in six uniform, he's shooting a little bit under what he usually shoots because he's usually in the forties, but he's shooting in the high thirties, thirty percent, the high thirty percent. But the but league he's average getting like, warmed up. That's good. Yeah, the league average is thirty, like thirty six, I think thirty five, okay. and he's still hitting thirty nine in the six uniform. So okay. I mean, it, it's not. I don't think that's big of a. I don't think it's going to be big of a deal. I think. He's gonna he's gonna sell into the moment. I mean, because he I mean he, he has experience. So he's not he's not like one of these rookies or anything, young kids or anything. So I think I mean, he'll figure it out. That's plus to have so many guys on the bench that what what was the bench that we were we've been missing? Because we couldn't mm -hmm. fill in those blanks all these other years that we've sat through that meltdown mm -hmm. seems to endlessly happen. Oh yeah, we'd have nights when the bench only puts up six points. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's like, what are you doing? This is not the time to go cold. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, you should not. You should know how to use that ball when it really matters. But yeah, I think that's 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 the one thing in be saving grace this this time around. Now, mind you, like I said, I've always been arm's length with this team since since the season started because it's just some of us fans are still nurturing. Like I've been hurt too much. I'm not ready. I'm not ready <laughs> to get sucked into another heartbreaking end of my season. Like a scoring lover, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just everyone always relates it to a, a past relationship, but that's what it feels like because you are yeah. mentally involved in this team every year and it ends in the same kind of disappointing, like, wonk, wonk way. Mm -hmm. And it's always just a matter of, like, one or two players just getting their crap together or losing it at the wrong time, you know? And so, yeah. like you said, I'm hoping Cam, I'm hoping Buddy, I'm hoping – well, I'm never worried about Kelly at this point because I think feel like Kelly's found his stride and what he's good at. We just yeah. hope that Tobias is the one that decides to lock in again, because he's usually the well, one that 
but we're paying him. He's got to wake up. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? He could have just again. I'm praying he just had an off night. It was just like yeah. I don't know what it would have meant because I don't. I don't like if they were if they had lost the playing tournament, they were still in the playoffs or were they not? Yeah, they would have to play again though, and, that, yeah. and that's what I didn't want them to have to do. I wanted them to get a day, at least a day or two of rest. I mean, they don't okay. play again until Saturday, so. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I knew it wasn't the end, but I just felt like this is your time to kind of try to turn it on, you know what I mean? Or at least see, like, this is your preview to what you could be going into with some energy. So I'm glad by the second half, like I said, some people said, I wonder what Nick Nurse said to them. And I said, I think in a very uh, polite rhetoric, he told them to <laughs> man the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. And it's why very nice. This? Like, why like, you let like, them do this to you? <laughs> yeah, please don't. This is this is not going to be good for my tenure if this is how y'all y'all going to choose to go out so early. Yeah. But all right, so moving on to just a brief talk about, speaking of winding down, the Flyers officially ended their season not making the playoffs. So you had said the last pod that you had not felt good about their playoff hopes anyway. So how do you feel? Yeah. Even though they had a very good stellar mid of the season, like to the point where I was even buying and thinking like, you know, they're going to be up there again. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, honestly, I think they won too many games. They should have, if they were going to make the playoffs, they should have lost some more games. Oh, really? I mean, just because of, like, they want a better pick. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm yeah. Not saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying tank because I don't like that. But, no, no, no. Uh, but at the same time, it was like, and also, once we lost Carter Hart, I had a feeling yeah. we were in trouble. Yeah. I mean, and the only thing, like you said, you were concerned and you, you have every right to be. Yeah. I was like, Carter, once Carter Hart was out, I was like, yeah, that's not going to fly. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's over, but I'm going to keep watching. Yeah. No, I, but I mean, we had a lot of individual growth. I mean, obviously, Travis Konechny had like his highest goal total for this season. Yeah, and, and I, and I think some of those, uh, some of those uh, younger goalies they picked up, goalkeepers yeah. they picked up, I think they'll be okay. They just need the, they didn't need some more experience. And I think they'll be all right going forward because who knows? what our future looks like goal because who knows what happened if Carter Hart gets off and everything's okay yeah if not we may he may be suspended forever so <laughs> yeah, yeah he may come back and honestly like you said I agree with what you're saying I, I also am thankful for this coach because I feel like we need a coach like him to kind of like not sugarcoat anything because obviously we were all prepared for this season to be like a yawner you know they didn't yeah. have hope other than just rebuild but I think mm -hmm. this coach has basically put in a new kind of reason to engage in this team. And I think that's why they had the surge that they did um, for as long as it lasted, because I think they truly saw that they can be something better than what was probably what been. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I say hats off to them. I, I know a lot of people are probably disappointed, but at this point, as, as Philly fans, we know we're for four. It's time to move on. <laughs> we got another yeah. team to root for. Yeah. So, I mean, I had I had very low expectations for them this year to begin with. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. That's why I said with Sixers, I'm I'm treating it the same way. I'm enjoying whatever they give, and I just pray that it turns out to be better. Now, moving on to the Phillies, the Phillies almost gave me a heart attack too because I was I had changed the channel thinking they're seven one, they're good. I come yeah, back, so to load the bases up. So <laughs> to load like, the bases up. Five like, oh, runs God. scored since I flicked the channel. <laughs> like, what yeah. is happening to the bullpen? Yeah, Soto just had a bad night. He had a bad night. Like, I'm glad that uh, and the starter, the starter Sanchez had a great game. Pitched a good game. Put some solid yeah. innings. I never see Sanchez have too much run support, so I was really happy that it was seven one when I first was. You know. Well, thank the God it was because uh, <laughs> Soto would have screwed that whole thing up if. Uh, I would have felt bad for him to not even get that credit, like knowing that it take it's a while it, between Wheeler and Sanchez. Now it seems like it's hard for them to give him them run support, um, especially because we know that Bryce has gone through something because Bryce has his little his little spaz attacks now because I think he's frustrated with him not being a consistent hitter like he's used yeah, to. Yeah, you know? yeah, the bats have not been consistent. I mean, I mean, a good thing is I'm starting to, we're starting to see some good swings out of him, like. Yeah, they're Schwarber and Trey get, get back to back, so that was they're good. Starting to get home, they're starting to get homers again. I mean, that's good, but especially we got to see more. We got to see more consistent uh, at bats. And Schwarber's actually hit more for contact this year than he has been, which is good. Good to see. Not I'm starting to think. Much. I'm starting to think you drag you dragging attention to the fact he lost weight. Maybe that's helping him swing the bat. Maybe he got less weight around the core. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he still got his pop, thing though. now. 
<laughs> he, he can still crush it though. So I mean, yeah, and even not even home runs, even just good base hits. Like he's getting yeah. deep base hits, and and Bohm hit some last night. So Bohm is starting to find it. Um, yeah. And Bohm has been one. I mean, even last year, he he had 100 RBIs last year. No, he was no. It, it, the the thing with Bohm is that there are weird periods he just goes cold bad. And yes. it's like, why did we, like, some people are like, why did they keep him? Why did they sign him? And, you know, it's like that mess. And Trey always frustrates me because I'm like, you weigh 20 pounds. How are you not able to get under that ball as light and his follow through is so precise? He has, a good, he has a pretty swing, though. He I has like a pretty swing, swing yeah. but every time I'm seeing him and he hits nothing, I'll be like, how are you doing that? Like, what are you looking at? <laughs> and, uh, and God, poor JT has been a punching bag this year. He got popped in the throat. Oh, God. Honestly, like, I, I thought he was going to miss more time from that, but me he came too. Right back. Me too. I thought his neck was going to have a big old red circle. <laughs> yeah, he, he took that shot. I was like, himself. oh, my God. God. Kep- when I getting, saw that Kep- thing, I was like. Getting, <laughs> yeah, Kevin's be getting hit. Like, that's. He and not getting is. taken. They're not taking a shot to the nuts from the ball bouncing off. Yes. Left- <laughs> he should be used to that though, because that happens to a lot of catchers. But it's just when I saw that thing well, when he pop like that in the throat, I said, Jesus. Yeah, especially the guys that like to go down on one on one knee some a lot. Yes. Like they they take that shot a lot because it's harder to get out of the way. And I get nervous when, you know, like I told like I was saying, I think I tweeted recently. I said, I know some catchers hate Bryce because when he swings as violently as he does, if you get oh, that God. pop. You must be thinking my life's about to end if that bag gets any closer to me. And he decides to have a bad swinging night. <laughs> he yeah, right. Me out to next week. I mean, that, that swing is so violent. It's like, very he, violent. And I think like sometimes he, he's trying to slow it because he knows, like, he has, he obviously has been struggling with back issues. I'm like, well, of course he is because you see how he swings that damn bat. Like, I, I'm sure he would have back issues. Yeah. But he's trying to work with it, you can tell, but he's also frustrating himself because he's also missing a lot. You know, he's he's missing a whole hell of a lot, but he also hit a grand slam. So it's like you just never know. Yeah. His consistency is going to be actually consistent. But I'm yeah. still not worried. I, I don't know what their record is right now. I haven't been keeping track. It's um, uh, 11 and 8, I think. So early, obviously mad early. So I'm, we're not, I'm not sweating. I want to say, I want to say to 11 eight. and 8. <laughs> Okay, it sounds good to me. I mean, at this point, like I said, they swept the Rockies, so that was good because that could have yeah. been that could have been like a one out of two type of thing. The way it looked like it was. Going. Yeah, I can tell you in one second here if you want. To. Okay, but while you're looking, <laughs> I, I just want to say in general, the, this team is more exciting just because you know that a lot of these guys have already been this close to um, the World Series enough to know what they have to work on. Mm-hmm. Stott, Stott has his moments where Stott like is. Because yep. like, to me, he swings like shit. You're right, 11 and 8? 11 and 8, yep. All right, good job. Um, Stott always gives me hope when he's at the bat, but sometimes he has his moments in the field where you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, pay attention. Like, him and Trey kind of struggle sometimes with the field play. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Um, he's had moments where I've seen that he's missed a couple. I, I know it's not that easy. They're, 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 but they're, they're gonna they're gonna make some mistakes. They're gonna make mistakes. I'm yeah. just saying. I know I'm not used to seeing Stott struggle at times. But like I said, yeah. not Harper's a worry. doing well at first base. I'm um I'm impressed with him making that switch, and he's who filling. He's doing well fielding first base. Harper. Oh Harper, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, not many errors in the position, which is good. So keep that up. No, and you know he's he's very. He's hardening himself even when he's not having a bad night. Like, oh you know, god, yeah, yeah. You can tell he's beating himself up when he like, I don't know. He misses a chance to get a clean like a uh, double play, and he'd be like, "It's timing, Bryce. Like, it's not a big deal." But you no, can tell yeah, he's I mean, pissed off, happens, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's one of those people like you never worry about because he's he's accountable all the time, and so I never feel like there's any reason to dump on Bryce. I just feel like sometimes he just needs to take a deep breath. I think he's so a type that sometimes you just be like, I just need you to relax, bro. Because I think all you need to do is breath. And yeah. Like I well, never worry about his mechanics. I just worry about him getting too, too deep. You well, know. Yeah, you know, we got plenty of time. We, we're north. We're still north of 140 games. So I mean. And I'm look. I can't wait to go to a game. I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited to go to some games. I'm glad they swept, especially last night. Being with we were kind of playing, you know, remote hockey with a. Uh, that and the Sixers, but to know yeah. that both these teams won their games by a point, almost like losing my life. 
I was I was on my both my gummies and <laughs> was late, late to my dentist appointment this morning, knowing damn well. It was oh, late. you were. <laughs> I was dragging. Couldn't find anything. Realized I was driving without my license for two days. Like I was a hot mess this morning. It was ridiculous. Oh wow. But yeah, tomorrow tomorrow for me is funny because I gotta I work tomorrow, but yeah. it's a blackout day, so I don't I have to. Uh, I'm pretty much catching up on work and have to write some stuff up. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't have to do my usual day to day routine. Right. So I'm it's probably literally... good that there's no big games. They're not starting no series tomorrow, right? Or yeah. No. I don't. Well, no. There should be should be games starting Friday. tomorrow. I think they had today off. Yeah, so. I would think because Thursdays they very rarely have a game unless they're finishing the series. But yeah. So we should be good. Friday yeah, should be stress tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, play they tomorrow. Play they got the White Sox tomorrow, so. All right. So is that a three gamer, or is that just like a two? Uh, three gamer, yeah. This one, okay. All right. I'm, I'm, yeah, and they're, they're here, the and they're Sox. home, and they're home for it. So there we go. Okay. I think this is this part of a ten game homestand. I think so. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and then the Reds come here, and then then they go play the Reds after that. So I think they just finishing up the homestand with with the Sox. So then they dip off to um. Uh, Cincinnati. Okay. All right. So this is like the white, the white and the red coming up now. So yeah. <laughs> but let's let's just hope that those bats come in more consistent, like we said. And uh look oh, wait till it gets warm too. Oh god. No, that's what I'm goodness. saying. When when spring decides to be consistent, because we're going back into this weird, like kind of funky, cold, rainy thing again. Mm -hmm. So um, as much as we know that spring is here, we don't really feel it until we're in the ballpark. So for all y'all who have been going to games, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, Eddie and I will be back to discuss whatever happens with this Knicks series after this weekend. Um, you got the draft coming up soon. Draft is coming. Every There's a lot of stuff actually starting to intersect next week. So next week might be yeah. a little stressful edition of the pod, possibly. <laughs> we decided to do our live edition because I heard something about the Sixers might be playing during the live show. So I don't know if we want to do live and do the Sixers. It's going to be a lot going on. So we're going to have to decide, make that decision because I think it runs into something like there's a conflict. Yeah, I, I got to figure that out because uh, yeah. I don't have uh, I, well, I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah, we'll I, talk I, about it, but yeah. we may or may not have a draft special next week, but if not, whatever. We'll talk about it. Either way, Birds of a Feather, AJ Suburban Princess, Eddie B. Eddie B. <laughs> and we will talk to y'all next time. Yes. Enjoy the Sixers series as well as the Phillies. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.